Welcome back. Lebanon on the Map Holiday Special is our new series featuring guests that actively throughout their professions highlight the country's importance abroad. Over to you, Yumna. Thank you, Linda. Our guest today is sportsman, mountaineer, and explorer Maxime Shaya. On May 15, 2006, he became the first Lebanese to climb Mount Everest and went on to eventually complete the Seven Summits Challenge. The Seven Summits being the highest mountains of each of the seven continents. In 2007, he also became the first man from the Middle East to reach the South Pole on foot from the Antarctic coast, a feat he repeated when he reached the North Pole all the way from Canada. Just this past August, Maxime broke another world record when along with two other men, he rode the Indian Ocean in 57 days, 14 hours, and 49 minutes. Welcome, Maxime. Hello, Yumna. So did I get the, uh, the hours and the minutes right? Everything's perfect. How, how would you compare the Indian Ocean Challenge as opposed to your previous ones? Well, the ocean is the ocean. You know, it's, uh, it's very unforgiving. And especially the Indian Ocean, especially that... Um, there are no shipping lanes, unlike in the Atlantic. So if something was to happen, we're very, very far from being rescued. Add to that the fact that um, there's something called the boat, which is an essential part of the expedition, uh, and the fact that I had never rowed an ocean before. Um, and y you get a feel of how different it is from, from an expedition on a, on a mountain. Do you, you know, I know it all started for you because you always enjoyed sports when you were growing up, but how does it, how do you start all these expeditions? How does it all begin? Well, it began by, by mistake, really. <coughs> I had won a race in Kenya and I was invited to climb uh, a mountain in nearby Tanzania, Kilimanjaro, and I discovered this uh, love for the outdoors and the mountains, and I discovered that that mountain was um, the highest peak in Africa. Actually, I knew that, but I discovered that it was one of the so-called seven summits. And so I challenged myself to climb these seven summits. At the time, there was only 58 in the world who had achieved that. And I did that to prove to myself that had I lived in a country without war, I could have maybe achieved my ambition to become a professional athlete. And also because I wanted to show a different face uh, than the face of Lebanon would see on the screens abroad. So I thought we'd show a different face uh, of Lebanon, the true face of Lebanon, um, not what we were seeing. Now we day constantly in, day out. see in yep. the media. Not on constantly, a, but at the time it was very a, bad. On a daily basis. Mm -hmm. When you finish one expedition and one adventure, you move on to the next. Now I know you're not alone. I know you get a lot of, you know, do you get a lot of support? How does this, so how does this work if somebody was to do this? Well, with regards to the seven summits, I had climbed a couple of mountains. Well, I discovered that there was something called the seven summits after climbing Kili. Then I went on to climb um, Elbrus, which is the highest peak in Europe. And then I went on to attempt Aconcagua, and I failed. And it was at the bottom of Aconcagua, after failing the summit because of the high winds at the time, that I got an OK from what's now the largest bank in Lebanon, Bank Audi, to sponsor all of my seven summits. So Did I that knew help I in any way to in order to finish well, course, eventually the I had the funds which were essential. I had the, the passion and the drive and the commitment. But then I got the funds which is an essential part of this. And so I laid out a plan. I knew that uh, from the beginning I knew when I would climb what and I gave contingencies in case I would fail a summit. Uh, and I also climbed other summits in preparation for these summits. So Everything, everything was laid out. When we came to uh, the Indian Ocean, it was a different matter. You speak of failing the summit, and I know that when you climb these summits, a lot of the times, the people who are climbing with you, your friends, people that you meet on the expedition, not everybody makes it. And I know in your book, Steve Dreams, you wrote, and I quote, it had been an hour since we'd first encountered David Sharp, and throughout that time I had done everything I possibly could to try to save him, but unfortunately he had been much closer to death than he was to life. Collapsing inside my tent, I cried for two full hours. It was May 15, 2006, and I had just turned my dream of climbing Mount Everest into a reality, yet this was hardly obvious to anyone who had, gotten, who had ran into me that day and saw my glum, grief-stricken demeanor. So. When you see death, when you see people who can't make it, but you keep pushing on. So anybody who's going through that, 
how do you do it? What is it inside you that keeps you going? I mean, I know there's drive ambition, but give me more. Look, in this case, it's returning from the summit that I came across this person who was, was, who was unconscious, who was frozen from the knees down, who was very, very close to death. Uh, and that person I did not know. Later on, I knew his name because I saw his passport, etc. But so it was coming back from the summit. So seeing something like that would get you more motivated to come back to your loved ones and not to suffer the same fate. But uh, we encountered lots of uh, difficulties during all of, our, all of the climbs. And maybe in answer to your question, when you come through something difficult, rather than thinking of the, the, that moment now, of, of what you're suffering or what you're going through, if you think of the big picture of, or what you're about to achieve, uh, then all of these little uh, problems um, fade away. What is it that you've learned? What is it that you've taken from all of these expeditions? Because you've achieved <coughs> and you've talked yourself every single time. So now, after being the first person to have done all of these poles, to have actually achieved that, and rode the Indian Ocean, how do you top yourself after this? Well, listen, I was giving a, a, a Founders Day speech this morning at, a, at an old school, Brumman High School, and I was telling the students that, although I don't know any one of them, I'm convinced that they all have a lot more potential than they think they do. Why? We always underestimate ourselves. So the big lesson is, is, you know, nothing is easy, but nothing is impossible if you really put your mind to it. And this is my message to the youth, especially the youth of today, be it in Lebanon or the whole region, which is constantly in turmoil. One should not allow what's going on around us to deter us from achieving our aims or even fulfilling our dreams. It would be a shame to live one's life to less than the potential we have simply because of what's going on around us. Is that us. why you always meant by there's an Everest for everybody? Correct. And by Everest, it doesn't have to be a mountain Everest or physical activity. Or actual Everest. It can be anything. And I'm sure we have a lot of great talent out there. And it's a shame to see a lot of it go to waste simply because they don't have the courage to pull that champion that resides within each of us. This series is called Lebanon on the Map, a holiday special. And I know that you've literally put Lebanon on the map by placing a flag of it when you reached every single summit, am I right? Correct. And I know that this all started because you said you had a dream to be more than what Lebanon could offer at the time because you left during the Civil War and you wanted to be this professional athlete. Um, do you think things have changed today? in 1975. Do you think an athlete or somebody who's aspiring to become an athlete mm -hmm. can make it in Lebanon today? Let me just tell you first, I did not leave Lebanon. I, I, I did go away and I did pursue my studies abroad in several countries and several disciplines, but I always would come back at Christmas and Easter and, and you know, the, the holidays and, and the But in terms holidays. of achieving your, your athletic goals? Listen, it's a fact that you have less opportunities in our country, and I can understand that, especially now although it's gone on for too long, maybe. Do you think there has been progress, though, Maxime? Sure, there's been progress, but um, there's still a long way to go. I'm sure we have a lot of talent. We're talking about sports now. Right. We have a lot of uh, um, talent, and unfortunately, um, it cannot manifest itself as simply here in Lebanon as it does abroad, where, you know, they put more emphasis on sports. And again, I understand that. I mean, we have more important things right now than take care of our local talent. We need to get a government first. Yes, yeah, true. I, you know, you said you wanted to be, you, you wanted to become a professional athlete. If you had become a professional athlete, or if you could have chosen, what would you have become? You mean what discipline? Which one? Which which sport would you have chosen? Huh, to it's go hard for? to tell. You know, it's like telling you which which of your kids do you prefer. Well, what's the point of asking easy questions, right? <laughs> <laughs> go ahead. Um, maybe triathlon would be one of them. Okay. Um, maybe something to do with biking. I, I, the bike is a is a very, very good thing that uh, brought me uh, lots of... So, uh, have, but so instead you decided to climb the mountains and row the ocean. As we approach the holidays, do you have a message for the Lebanese, whether it be the youth or everybody who's watching you today? Well, I'd like to thank those who backed me to begin with Bank Audi, like we spoke, and then, um, you know, for the Indian Ocean Odyssey, it was a conglomerate uh, headed by Nestle and Abbott and Darl Handasa, Demco, Midis Group, uh, Foundation Saradar, uh, the Rotana Hotel Management Group, and Suklin. You know, I'm not saying this to thank them because they backed me, but to tell the others out there, and there's lots, uh, that 
it's not a bad thing to back a local talent if he or she can make it somewhere. Without their help, they cannot make it. And maybe in the absence of that government, we should get the private sector to And back to back to everybody, team. Steve Dreams, the book I'm holding here right <laughs> now, which is Maxime Shaya's book, and basically, I think his message is for everybody to keep dreaming, to keep finding their Everest. And thank you so much for being with us today. Thank you, Yumna. That was the explorer of Lebanon, as we like to call him here, Mr. Maxime Shaya. Back to you, Linda. Thank you, Yumna.